City cars do exactly what they say on the box, drive around the city. With their tiny wheels and tiny engines, these minuscule miracles are perfect for sneaking around urban areas, doing your shopping and parking in tiny spaces, all while using next to no fuel. They're not very adventurous, some would argue they're not that fun, and they're definitely not grand tourers. Or are they? Is it possible to take a multi-day road trip onto dirt, gravel and mud in a car that's better designed for picking up poodles, pad tyres and chai lattes? Well, on this very special feature-length episode of Mighty Car Mods, we've decided to find out as we put two of our favourite city cars to the test. We're taking Marty's Daihatsu Charade and my Volkswagen up on a cross-country adventure for thousands of kilometres, off the safety of the city's sealed roads and into the uncertainty of some of Australia's remote dirt roads that track their way across the state. We'll be taking all our supplies, food, tools and clothes with us and our destination is the very centre of New South Wales to settle an age-old argument. So strap yourselves into the tiny back seats because you're coming along with us for the ride as we take these tiny little cars to places they were never meant to go. Good morning, mate. How you doing? I'm all right, except for being in crappy Sydney morning traffic. It's a good day. Well, mate, we have got a road trip today in two of the most suitable GT cars from the collection. Yep, it's, we just need to prove that these cars can literally do anything. I mean, they're called city cars because they're meant to be driven in the city, let's be honest. Um, but we're going to be proving they can go anywhere. We're going to be driving um, a couple of thousand kilometres, actually, and we are heading out to the dead centre of New South Wales. Now, the dead centre there's actually a little bit of contention about that, but we'll be uh, exploring that later in the video. For now, uh, we've got to head west, Martin, over the Blue Mountains. How's your car going, mate? Uh, so far, untested. I'm, I'm impressed, actually. I figured because of sort of the nuggetiness and the chopped springs and all that sort of rubbish that it would be crap. But aside from it being a bit rough and my stuff jumping around, it, it's driving really nicely. It drives straight. It's smooth, it's got plenty of power, it's a bit of a winner. I'm rolling along in European comfort right now, mate. Uh, I've obviously got, you know, uh, bigger wheels and tyres and lowered suspension, but it still feels wonderful. We hadn't been on the road for that long before the conversation descended into an argument about whose three-cylinder one-litre car was fastest out of our two nuggets. So we thought there's one way to find out. All right, I'm gonna see if I can keep up with him. All right, here we go. I'm flat to the floor, second gear. Can't catch her. Can't catch you, mate. Yeah, you've got me all the way up to about 100, I reckon. And that was zero to 100, and uh, I reckon that took about nine seconds. <laughs> yeah, or longer. I think that what would be interesting to see, and we're not gonna be able to see on this road, is that I would suggest that the UP probably has a greater bias towards a top speed for the Autobahn, whereas yours would be limited to, you know, I mean, it's meant to drive at 110 or 120, whereas this is probably designed to drive better at 150. No doubt, mate. And the thing is, the power difference might not be much, being that they're both one litres, but the gearing will be, that's what it will be. It'll be all about the gearing. So we are heading west towards the Blue Mountains, and um, Marty, it looks like we are driving into some uh, severe weather, mate. Yeah, it looks a bit grey. I can even see the rain falling down up there. It doesn't look good. I've had an alert come up on my iPhone that says severe weather warning for thunderstorms, rain, and potential flooding. Which is unusual because as you head west, it usually just gets drier. But you know, as is tradition with us, if we go somewhere, the crappy weather follows. Luckily, we're in these cars that weigh about 800 kilos and definitely won't float away in a flood. Yeah, not great, but our cars are modern. We have made sure they are safe. We are going to be careful, conscientious road trippers, my friend. It is multi-lane highway right up to the foot of the mountains where the steep climb begins, which is the first test for our tiny little engines. All right, we are starting to make our way up to the mountains, which means I've got to start uh, rowing the gears a little bit more and see if I can get up there in front of this Daihatsu. <laughs> I'm coming. I'm coming for you, mate. What gear are you in? It's called a chop right there, mate. I'm foot flat to the floor in third gear, but you're not really moving away from me that much, mate. See you, mate. 
Ah, oh, look, it has, maybe it has a little bit more power, but not much. All right, it's getting twisty, Marty. Let's uh, drop it back down to third. And one, two, three, go. <laughs> See you, mate. <laughs> I'm not, I'm not catching, I'm not catching you at all actually. The world's slowest race. We're still going 10 kilometers under the speed limit by the way. <laughs> I reckon if we start that higher in the RPMs, I reckon I'll get you Marty, like. Three, two, one, go. Oh dude, I might have bad news for you. That's really embarrassing for both of us, but mostly me. Oh, not really, your car's heavier, man. Mine only is making power like up near the red line, so I need long enough road and high enough speed limits to actually get there. Yeah, I don't have a taco, so I've got no idea what my revs are. I'm just nailing it until it stops letting me. We're making a pit stop at one of our traditional watering holes. And by traditional, I mean we stopped here once before to pick up Justin Bieber's girlfriend. On any road trip, it's important to stay hydrated, avoid hunger, keep the glare out of your eyeballs, and make sure you don't end up too smelly. We need sunglasses and perfume. Sunnies and perfume. The perfume is up there. I feel like they're kind of Italian, which for some reason should suit my car quite well. <laughs> oh, dude, that is so hot. Oh, it's so German. <laughs> they're fantastic. Because they're all like angular and they look like your car a bit. Oh gosh, it's a little bit too Tron for no, me. No, that's good. Maybe this is more up. Maybe it's more like modern kid in it up. Yeah, I think I gotta go that. There we go. Great. Yeah, man. Now we just need some perfume. Here is the perfume selection. Do you have any recommendations for perfume? I have no idea about that. For us? Would you rather have, Martin, a lucky wish or an authentic night? <laughs> What's this do? What's that for? <laughs> One lucky wish, two sunglasses, please. All the ingredients for an excellent day out. I think that's called a Twinkie. It is a Twinkie. I've never had one before. What about this? I've never had that either. It's a fake Twinkie. Twinkie's an American thing, it's I a think. It's Twinkie. Do you want one? Yeah. I don't. I don't either. Martin, we're you ready for the outback, mate. I'm ready for. I'm ready for adventure. I'm ready to see some sights, go to some places I've never been, and have some experiences we've never had, including a lucky wish mutton. A lucky wish. Now, last time we were here, we bought Justin Bieber's girlfriend. We did. We weren't a massive fan of that scent. No. I don't think people have been a massive fan of this one because look how dusty it is. It's oh, been it sitting hasn't. there for a very long time. Yeah. But mutton, experiences are all about all of the senses, aren't they? Oh well, yeah. And this experience uh, will be punctuated by the punctuation of lucky wish. Of pungency. Of lucky wish. Of lucky wish. Now, it's going to be, oh, it's getting smaller it's and smaller. It's going to be fruity. <laughs> that massive box with that tiny little thing. So, Martin, are you ready for a little go, yeah, mate? Yeah, you can spray yourself. Don't spray me. I, I don't want to be sprayed. I'm not. You're spraying it my direction. Oh, is that going towards you? Sorry, I thought it was don't going towards me. Don't cover me in that shit. Yeah, just have a... Don't cover me. That oh, one's even oh, worse. Oh, that is worse. Stop it. <laughs> The weather has turned yet again, and I also quickly learned that my car is not an off-road vehicle. If Marty's charade can't even drive through a muddy pothole, I have no idea how it's gonna go once we actually get out into the country. All right, Marty, we got our sunnies, we've got our delightful perfume, and now we are on our way over the mountains in atrocious weather as usual. I can't work out whether my car stinks more or less than it did because I found so much dog hair in it, but now I've got this atrocious perfume to worry about as well. But I also do have my very stylish and fashionable sunnies, and my car is working perfectly and I'm not using any oil. So overall, I'm having a massive, stinky wind. <laughs> is, it, is that you? No, I just said stinky wind. Okay, I just heard weird laughing. So your car had a dog in it. There was a blind pond that I thought I could. And then he said she was saying to me like she wanted to come back to my place, but she had the everywhere and did everything all after that. It was just, it was a wild night. Are you hearing this, Marty? Yeah, was that you? I thought it was you doing a dumb voice. No, mate, I'm not me. But you know, after Russell showed her, oh, I tell you what. I think we're just getting some cross. I think that's called trucky cross talk. Is that a trucky? 
truck, like I think we can hear someone else's CB. All oh, right, I thought we picked an empty channel. You can pay her a dollar and then you can get sausage roll. <laughs> While also being a very useful tool when you're out of mobile reception range, a CB radio can provide hours of entertainment on the chat channels. As we head deeper and higher into the mountains, the weather is getting progressively worse. The rumbling in the clouds is drowned out by the rumbling in our bellies, so we decide to stop for a snack. All right, mate, I think we should pull over in a minute because it's not quite lunchtime, but we need a bit of time for our lunch to cook as we're driving. So I'm gonna pull over in Tunnel Hill rest area, and I reckon we get our chef on. What do you think? So we are about to turn on to the highway over there to go to Bathurst and um, so we've stopped off to make some lunch uh, which is going to be good so we're going to be cooking that in the back of Marty's car which I'm really looking forward to because it's going to be like a home cooked meal but not a home it's going to be in a car which I think is pretty exciting personally and um, that's good. And so we're going to be cooking that up here. We'll do it under shelter because it looks like it's about to rain. Uh, and then, um, yeah, we'll cook that up. And then in a couple of hours when it's lunchtime, we'll be able to eat it like fresh from the back of the car, which I am looking forward to. And I'll be back in a couple of minutes. When traveling, it's really important to stay in constant contact with your mates to make sure no one gets lost. My friend was taking quite a while and rather than worry, I decided I'd launch a drone and check that he was okay. <laughs> He's trying to throw shit at me. He, he's throwing rocks at me. <laughs> Did he always got me? Alright, I'm getting out. Dude, some random drone just showed up. Like, we were here, and all of a sudden I hear this buzzing, and then this drone just comes flying over. We're continuing west past the Mount Piper coal-fired power station. Its giant cooling towers release steam from the turbines which are supplied from fresh water from two purpose-built dams nearby. We're following the railway that was built to move resources to the cities and to ships for export overseas from these regions. Many are still used today, but some have been left aside in a slow but steady decay. We found a disused railway station perfect for setting up for our lunch cook. So we've stopped here at the Ben Bullen station on the Guaba Bar line. This is a historic site that was built in 1882, I think. And we've stopped here to make some lunch, even though it's not lunchtime. This area is just over the uh, Blue Mountains. We're maybe 45 minutes from the on the western side. And uh, this railway line uh, kind of opened up the west a little bit, but importantly for this area, very rich in coal. So there's coal-fired power station, there is coal mines everywhere, and a lot of these railway lines are used with massive coal trucks that just go from here into the city, into port, and most of it goes overseas. Obviously that's changing these days, but that is what goes on a lot in this area. So a lot of the fortune of this area is dictated on the various mines which come and go all the time. We're gonna be making a soup, everybody, and it's gonna be cooking in the back of the car as we drive along. So I've brought in my fridge, I've got, um, which has been chilled to four degrees, just like your fridge at home. I've got that is so good. various vegetables, I've got carrots, I've got onions, tomato, I've got some fruit, um, I've got some garlic, I actually got the pasted one just to save some time, but you can imagine that's a garlic that we just chopped up. And I've got a knife. A knife. Oh, you have my knife. Why not? Yeah, from the toilet stop. It wasn't you... a toilet stop, I was just cutting a hole in a seat. So where'd you put the knife? I don't know. I have a knife. Do you? Yep. Show me. That. You call that a knife. That's it, that's our cooking knife. All right, good, well you can do the chopping. Um, can you please start chopping up the ingredients? And this here, everybody, this is my portable stove. So that is currently heated up via my 12 volt system running directly to my battery. That is currently heating up to 150 degrees. I've also got a secret ingredient to a soup which I'll share with the people later on. We're gonna cut them small and then we're going to put them in the stove and by the time we get to lunchtime, Martin, so look at that, oh, that's yeah. sharp, that's good. How's that working for you? This is really good, mate. Well, look, the knife I had was a special one that I sharpened up particularly this morning, um, just so we'd be able to do this so quickly and easily. I just want to say for the record, I don't think you're meant to use this while you're in motion. I'm just going to say, it, that doesn't look great. We're going to just hope that through time, and slow, dude, slow cooking. We're slow cooking, slow cooking that's exactly a slow what we're car. doing. Yes. So we're gonna transfer this into my stove. Oh, did yep. you hear it sizzle? It just made a little sizzle sound. 
Dude, look at that. Oh, that's really good. We can go a tiny, weeny bit more stock. Not a lot, because I don't want it to spill everywhere, yep, ideally. there you go. Oh, dude, look at it. That's already heating up. Boom, and as long as my car is making electricity, that soup is making, I might even put a bit of tape over it so it doesn't move around. Do you want to know what my secret ingredient is? One singular oh, cheese and bacon. Because that, that like thickens it up. It's like when you need to thicken up a Smell sauce it. or a goulash. Yeah, yeah. You put cornstarch in it or flour in it, and so that, yeah, that's just gonna this, thicken it up. This will be trans. That's just, just one, just one. Because that just has the tiniest, tiniest weeny bit it's of. It's transformative. No, nah, we know what's got in it. 635, my friend. Flavour enhancer. Oh, MSG. So now we've got MSG in there. And you gotta be careful where you leave food scraps too. You should try and take them with you because otherwise animals will eat them. And if they're by the road, if you chuck that on the side of the road, kaboom, roadkill. And not the good kind like our friends who drive crap cars in America. I'm talking the bad kind like yep. kangaroos that no longer are with us. Yep. It's time to get back into our little nuggets and hit the road again. All right, back on the road. Lunch is cooking back there. It's all strapped down, so hopefully it won't splash around. And the oven does have a little gasket on it to keep all the uh, liquid in, which we tested before and it worked okay. Just okay. Got an hour or two of driving ahead of us and then we'll be at our next destination. It's immediately noticeable how fewer cars there are out here. But when the weather has been bad, it can get chewed up pretty badly by the thousands of trucks that head east and west all day and all night. Hey dude, I just hit something. I think it was some bitumen in the road, like a pothole. But because this thing's so stupidly low, I, I, I saw some stuff just explode out the back. Yeah, that was weird. It's like a really smooth, nice road and then it's like a reverse pothole. Very weird. Get out and have a look. What happened? Um, it's like a reverse pothole. Like I hit... Like, I mean, the car's stupidly low. Oh, okay. It's broken the exhaust. Oh, what's that? I really hope that's plastic. Oh no. I really hope that's no. plastic. Oh my God, what is that? It's like part of the subframe. Um, um, I've got a jack, we'll jack yeah, it up. Yeah, let's have a look. look. The first step, of course, is to jack up your car. If you can get your jack under the stupid thing. Yeah, that'll do. Look up at this point, being that we are hundreds of kilometers from home, I'm not really worried what happens to the sill. But normally you'd go onto the subframe, only I think the subframe is what's hanging on the ground. <laughs> Hopefully it's just like a crossbar thing though. The car still drives fine. It looks very broken. Oh, damn, what is that? You know what it's done? Yeah, that'll do. You know what it's done? This is like a cross piece that goes, joins the subframe, and you can see the bolt on the other side. That's actually flipped 180 degrees around. That, that's, from the, that's normally on the driver's side. Oh, right. And that's flipped the whole way around. But all we gotta do is whiz that bolt out. It looks like it's sort of bent the subframe a little bit. But oh, so it's ripped, the, it, I, I see it's ripped from where, it's ripped the, not the bolt out, but it's ripped the surrounding of it off. Yeah, yeah, it has. And look, you can see on the exhaust, see that witness mark of where, where it's just been smashed? Yes. So, I mean, normally you jack stand and everything, I feel confident just to un unwiz that bolt. There's a toolkit right there. Yeah. I reckon we just unwiz it and take it off. The first step is to jack up your car and then grab your toolkit. No matter where you're road tripping, a kit like this can help you get out of trouble if you can do basic repairs on the side of the road. And this is really important if you're a long way from civilization. There it is. Some kind of chassis stiffening thing that wow. is now. Look at it. It just completely tore it off and flipped it 180 degrees around. And I think maybe what I saw was the road getting pumped by it. Yeah, right. Do you know what I mean? Um, and it looks like my exhaust is dangling a bit more than it should, so yep. it probably copped a hit. I've been wondering at why it rides so badly, because it just, like, it crashes over every bump. It feels like a go-kart. It's got, so like, basically no suspension. And not only have the rear springs been chopped, they're so small, they don't sit in the, in the spring seats anymore. If you go up so there... So you're just on bump stops then? Yeah, if you go up there, we might be able to just sort of... Are there bump stops still in there? No, there's no bump stops. They've just fucking pulled them out. But then they put premium KYB shock absorbers in it after you took the springs out, which the shock absorbers would last about three weeks. Wow, wow, it's so bad. All right, good, let's continue. Should we check on our soup? Yes. It's only leaked the tiniest bit. Need a safety strap. Oh. Dude, look at it bubbling away. 
It smells really good. And look, it's in my MSG cracker. Look, yes. it's expanded and grown. See you soon for lunch. It's time to hit the road again and try and dodge as many potholes as we can. Uh, okay, this makes sense. That's what I ran into before, man. It was a pile of this rubbish. That's what it was. They're fixing potholes, but they're leaving it proud of the road. So it turns out that the pothole fixing method out here is to leave a high pile of hot mix on the road and wait for lower Daihatsus to fly past and trim it down. So dude, this is basically the start of the central west. Um, we're heading out towards Mudgee at the moment and um, this is an interesting area because as you can see it's like rolling hills It's usually quite brown out here, but there's been a lot of rain. So it's all looking pretty green Oh, there's a wombat on the side of the road poor guy's been absolutely chopped But what you're gonna see more and more going into the future is people planting wildflowers for a thing called carbon farming Marty, I reckon you and I should save up for some land and plant a bunch of flowers on it. We've successfully completed the first part of our mission. Both cars have arrived in Mudgee. We've arrived in Mudgee, which is a beautiful little town a couple of hundred kilometers west of Sydney. The name Mudgee uh, is derived from the Aboriginal word Muthi, which means nest in the hills. Which and it, it is. is nested it's in the hills. a beautiful spot, rolling green hills, wineries everywhere, and a bit of an industrial center too. Like, you know, if you're gonna hire stuff or get farm machinery or go to an engineering shop, it's all here. It sort of serves about a 100K radius, I'd say. People say that Mudgee is one of the best wine regions in the country. I wouldn't know because I don't drink the stuff, Me do neither. you? Not really. No, okay. But when you come to a small town like this, it's probably easy when you're in a hurry going through to go to your local KF Maccas or your dirty something. You don't have to do that. You can have your own mad fresh food cooked in the back of your car with a stove. Which has now been on for well over an hour. Well, it's almost two hours, Martin, and isn't it? My car, I mean, you can't aromatize this, but my car smells like a soup. Smell vision. It, it smells, smells great. It smells like soup. So um, we're gonna crack it open, you're coming with us, and we'll have a bowl. And it's been slowly sort of like boiling away in there, and it hasn't spilt too much of it. It's looking pretty good. Are we ready? It gets hot. Watch the steam, ready? Oh! Ah. Oh. Good, Martin, yeah. that's excellent. Let's get a bowl on. There may be conjecture over whether we've created a soup or a stew. It turns out it depends where in the world you're from, how you cook it, and the liquid content. Either way, we have a tasty carme, delicious lunch to share directly from the boot of this JDM nugget. So what do you call this, Martin? Daihat soup. Daihat stew. Daihat stew. <laughs> you know how before, though, I was saying that you avoid all those, um, all those places? So now we're going to go and find some of those places. <laughs> no, actually, in all seriousness, when you do go to a small country town, you don't need to head to the biggest, most shiny, multi-conglomerate chain. Go find a local one, man. Get a yeah. good burger, a good old school. There's always Chinese, there's always takeaway shops, there's always bakeries. So if, you, if you're visiting, no matter where you are in the world, try and support the local people. They're keeping the money in their community. Right. You're helping people directly and that you're live in the generally community. Generally supporting their entire family, which is kind of cool, and not kicking it up the chain to some massive thing. Yeah. You should we, do whatever you want, but we like to do that occasionally, don't we? We're gonna go and do it right now, Martin. This is not bad. It's not bad. I'm not... I'm not eating any more of it, though. Now that we've had some food, it's time to go meet some locals. Dude, your tunes are sick. Are you just cruising around with some tunes on? Yeah, yeah, yeah. That's awesome. Nice I to meet you. I know you from somewhere. YouTube? Mighty Car Mods? Yeah, you yeah, too. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I watch your channel all the time. Oh, do you? Yeah, I'm actually subscribed. And what are you doing in Mudgee now? Um, Mudgee, I'm on bail. Maybe we, should, we won't talk about that. We met some more locals that spotted us in the street, and now it's time to get some lunch. So we found an awesome little cafe down here in Mudgee called Dancing Goat. I don't know anything about it, except I do know that they do southern fried chicken. So we've just ordered some southern fried chicken. Now, I've just got a feeling it's going to taste a little better than Marty's soup. So as you can see, my friend Martin is not here. He has just arrived back. Where have you been, Martin? Well, we parked outside of Service New South Wales. Yeah. Two days Did ago. Did you pay off some of your defects? No. I did pay for that fan we met before. I paid for his rego. He just transferred his first car into his name. Yeah. So as he was pulling out his card, I quickly grabbed my card and beeped it. Oh, just now. And paid his transfer fee for his first 70, 79 series Land Cruiser. That's awesome, he just bought, like an old crappy one. That's great. It's his first car. He's a panel beater, so he probably earns like 300 bucks a week. Why were you in the service in New South Wales though? Because two days ago, I failed my boat license miserably. I did a full course, what like boat studied it, everything. Why are you getting a boat license? All right, we've had some lunch. 
Uh, we had some of Marty's delicious soup as an entree, and now we are leaving Mudgee. Next stop, Dubbo. You just never know what might happen when you're on a road trip. Getting out of your every day and into the world opens you up to opportunities that might never present themselves otherwise, like getting carjacked. Hey mate. Hey mate. How Hi. you doing? What are you doing out this neck of the woods? Oh mate, we're just going for a drive. How you doing? Nice Hi, to meet you. Dusty from Golga. I don't do that. I'll show you again. Well, we do a high five or something. How are you, man? Good, mate. Moog Mighty Carmods. Hey, buddy, how are you? You're from Golga. Good, yeah, mate, just up the road. Oh, that's a nice spot. Yeah, we just seen you in town. I said to my daughter, I said, that's the boys from Got Mighty Carmots. And Kirsty's going, no. Yeah. And we just come around the corner then, and I'm like, that's him. Yeah, yeah. So where he's off to? Ah, uh, we're off to Dubbo now. What, have you got a farm down here? Yeah, mate, I've got shitload of cars. You've got to call and have a look. Yep, we do. Yep, let's have a look. Great. Done. Don't kill us. Ah, uh, so we are just parked on the side of the road, and we met a fella called Dusty uh, who said he watches the show and he's invited us over to his house so that is where we're going I think he might have had the same dreadlocks for the last 35 years by the look of him but he's a very happy and friendly fellow and I believe his comment as we're leaving was very happy and very friendly but I am still going to be sending my GPS location to a trusted person you're doing some find my friends action in case you need to be found <laughs> All right, well, this is like a blind date, but way scarier, but uh, let's see how we go. This is just like a blind date, but in country New South Wales with a large barefooted man that we just met on the side of the road who's invited us back to his place. Look at this place. It's like a, like a wreckers. Uh, this, is, uh, this is crazy, dude. We just stopped on the side of the road and met Kirsty and Rusty. Uh, he uh, stopped off and uh, and said he watches the show and said he's got a few cards. So well, he, he spotted us basically. Well, he probably spotted the fact that we uh, had two little nuggets. Oh wow! Oh, there's there is actually a lot of cars here. There's heaps of mad cars here. Is this a is this, are you is this a wreckers? No, we just collect. Wow. <laughs> Dad's been collecting since he was 18. We still have his first Dodge Phoenix in the shed. No way. Yeah. Well, I, 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 didn't, I, didn't, I was like, obviously you're friendly, um, but, but I wasn't sure if I, we were going to get shanked or you were going to go off well, just a bit. Out, don't shoot us. Yeah, I just don't kill us. But I mean, the day's young, isn't it? Are you a mechanic as well, or you just know how to fix shit? Yeah. Yeah, just a back harder. Yeah. Hey, cool. Is that a V8 Sierra? Yep. Oh, look at that. Twin turbo BMW and a Windsor. Uh, so it was all running before, engineered. And then we just um, started putting the twin turbos on it. <laughs> I just got to finish it off. I've got to get my mate from um, Perkett to come over so we can finish your lines to the sump yeah. and duck into the rock covers. So Job done. Ad boost. Yeah. <laughs> amazing. This anyway, is, go this is amazing. Way, go this way. Yeah, go up that way. It's a bit, it's a bit muddy that this way. is... It's like a museum. It is. <laughs> like it, it, <laughs> it is like a museum. Look at that. Whoa. Look at this! Incredible. Buying and selling cars is something many of us do, but some people never let them go. There's just too much history and meaning caught up in them to consider passing them on. Many of these cars would have arrived here because no one else wanted them. But as time has passed, many of their values have gone through the roof and become highly sought after vehicles. But for Rusty, the real value in these cars is the stories they hold and the histories they share. And that is worth more than any amount of money. I mean, you said you had some cars. You, you got some cars. Was I lying or not? You are not lying. Far out. This is amazing. So I feel like, I feel like you're a bit of a Valiant fan and a bit of a Ford man. One of the very first cars I ever drove was a Kingswood. And I don't know what's going on here. This is a Corolla with... What's going on here? Uh, 253, that's a grown-out car. I'm in the boats now. That's mad. Have you got any cars that work that you use just to burl around your property in? Oh, like paddock bush, bashes. Bush, yeah, paddock bashes. Yeah, and, yeah. and Lexus would have V8 in it. We paddock bashed. <laughs> oh, do you? Yeah. <laughs> yeah. <laughs>
<laughs> the amount of effort that you've put into maintaining all these cars, oh, I think is like, I think a lot of people don't get it, but I think it's amazing that you've kept them all and you're looking after them. So good on you, man. Because otherwise, like, what would happen to these cars otherwise, you know? So scrappies. good on you. Good on you. The scrappies are oh, in the shredder. No, we don't. I'd try to save him from the scrappies. What an opportunity it was to meet with Rusty and check out some of his awesome car collection. And while he's probably got enough stories to keep us well entertained for weeks, it's time for us to get on the road and keep heading west. We said goodbye and jumped back into our nuggets and hit the highway. Here the roads open up as you pass farms and rural industry. Out here, trucks and utes take over the road and you see fewer and fewer small cars the further away you get from the towns. And I think I may have worked out why that is. Um, so the road's getting like progressively shitter and the way you can tell you've got no suspension travel is when your head hits the roof because you, your suspension is not doing its job. Is this road bumpy, this one? Did you just say, is this road bumpy? You were saying you were hitting your head on the roof, but we're not even on a bumpy road yet. Oh. No, there's some decent sized bumps in this one, mate. Yeah, I'm not feeling anything in this car, mate. Nothing. You must be making that up. You riff for real? Look at me. If you can see the camera, I'm not... This is not a bumpy road, man. Sure, okay. <laughs> Marty's worst dreams soon become reality as the road turns to dirt. And we both legitimately believe that his car is going to fall apart. Oh, gravel roads are so awesome. So I've been shaken to bits down the highway and I noticed that the soup smell was getting stronger. And um... Where is it? It's <laughs> everywhere. The soup is literally everywhere. It's not sealed! We didn't seal it. We did. Oh man, and it's cold because it wasn't that was... in. We didn't seal it, dude. So I've just exploded my oven and my freezer out of the car. But it's a good idea while you're parked up, solar, especially on a nice sunny day like today. I plug this in to my battery at the front, I leave it on my car, and then I have endless, endless power. Solar's becoming a massive thing in Australia. We've got heaps of sun. They're talking about exporting it overseas with cables under the ground. That's how much power we have. We just drove past an absolutely enormous one. Certainly in some states, they're gonna start charging you per kilometer. So you basically get someone like a meter reader who sees how far your car's gone, and then you'll have to pay a fee. When I put 50 bucks worth of fuel in this this morning, well over 20, well over half, $25 of that just went straight to the government as tax. If you have an EV and you charge it off your own solar, how's the government getting paid for it? And they would say that, then the roads don't get any work done to them because there's no tax for it, there's no money for it. But they're wasting money on all sorts of other stuff. Well, and that's the argument, isn't it? But anyway, so yeah, it's a good chance that per kilometre tulling's gonna come in, especially yep. when it comes to electric cars, which for the next 10 minutes, my car's gonna be electric. While I parked it up, I'm gonna make sure that my battery doesn't get flat. Australia has some of the highest per capita solar energy generation in the world due to our massive land size and hot climate. Large scale solar in a farm like this is becoming more and more popular as energy investments in fossil fuel power generation diverts over to renewables. The panels themselves aren't much different than what you might find on a rooftop system, but a farm like this could have up to 50,000 panels on land that would otherwise be used for farming. Far up the road is the town of Dubbo where we've decided to stay for the night. That was a big day, Martin. Huge. The up was great. It just looked it so was, poised and excellent. It on the was road. comfortable and planted. Nothing fell off it and it doesn't stink. <laughs> just saying. My, How'd yours go? My back braking suspension, well, lack of suspension, um, was probably a bit of a downer. The stuff flying off the car was a bit of a downer. It running into things on the road and smashing the subframe off, that was like a little bit of a downer as well. Yeah. Um, but I mean, the car got there, didn't it? Hello, mate. How are you doing? Picking up player. Yeah. I'm just playing a couple of tunes, mate. We're enjoying the afternoon breeze. Might go get ourselves some cold bevies and then smash some Chinese. I would do the same, but I've got to go to work at 8 o'clock. What do you do for work? Tonight. What do you do? Are oh, you working on the road? Road work, yeah. Oh, okay. Well, good luck. Thanks to you, we get to drive our cars around. That's so right. thank you very much. On the roads. Thank you. We appreciate it. Thank you, mate. See you, Cheers. Mate. Have a good evening. So tomorrow, tomorrow, we've got about 11 hours of driving to do, don't we? Yeah, even more than what we did today. And um, 
we've got a lot. I mean, we are trying to make our way to the centre of New South Wales. Let's just tell the people what's going on, Martin. Yes. What's going on, Martin? We we want to we want to settle one of the longest disputes in New South Walesian history. Marty and I live in New South Wales. We do. Which is a state of Australia. Eastern coast, beautiful place. You've it got is. snow, you've got mountains, yep. you've got city. And somewhere out there, Martin, is the centre of New South Wales. The centre, the geographical the epicentre centre of New South Wales. And we want to get there and get back because then we've technically gone across New South Wales. Well, we've been to the distance. centre. But there's some conjecture. There's conjecture about, conjecture about where the centre actually is. And there's two different towns that are claiming that. That it's within their shire. Exactly. So... Um, we, we found a way to sort it out once and for all. Absolutely. Basically. And so Australian that's what way. we're going to be doing tomorrow. Yeah, we're going to do it. Because we do have 11 or 12 hours of driving, are you confident your car will get there? Absolutely Legit. not. Absolutely not. It, like, it was... Oh, dude, serious? hold it. I, it was smashing my head into the roof of the car over bumps that were literally this big, dude. And then when I radioed you and said, did you feel that bump? You're like, there's bumps in the road? Yeah, because I couldn't feel it. Because there weren't any. And every other car was just going sailing on. I'm going... <laughs> like, it was smashing me, dude. And like, you know, I'm... A, a, it's... It's... I understand... I don't slam cars like that. No, that's Because dumb. slamming, it's that's dumb. dumb. The spring... If you go over a big enough bump, the springs are falling out. It looks hectic. You get to tell your mates that you're the biggest legend ever with your slam car. And I understand from a looks perspective and the aesthetic. Driving it yeah. across a state as big as New South Wales yes. is actually stupid. Dude, my car is gone. It was parked there. Yes. Yes, it is gone, Mum. What do you mean, yes, it's gone? I Where's sold my it. car? I sold it last night. You sold it? Yeah. It's just some random. <laughs> yes. <laughs> Dude, we're supposed to be going on a road trip in our own cars. Well, you're road tripping in my car now. Come on, man. I legitimately sold your car. While I was sleeping. <laughs> What's wrong with you? What's wrong with you? Why are you laughing? Because I actually did. I actually did so. Why is it funny? Because originally I was just going to park it around the corner and trick you. And then I actually sold it. Dude, I really like that car. <laughs> Dude, I really like that car. Oh, it stinks. <laughs> I wish I could say it was a joke. I did sell it. Who sells someone's car while they're asleep? <laughs> Good night, mate. Yeah, have a see you later. I'll see you in the morning. My car got stolen last night, but it was, well, it was sold by my mate, but he also owns the car. Um, right, so your mate also owns the car, and it's not actually stolen, it's just sold. Yeah, but he sold it without me knowing. So does that count as stolen? So who, who owns the car? It's in both our names. Right, look, it probably sounds like something you should probably talk to your mate about. We have 11 hours. I don't care. We have 11 How hours in the car. How would you feel if I sold this? I know. How I be, feel. You'd be Because you sold my GN 250. You just sold it to some random builder for $250. I spent four grand on it. I mean, this is not about revenge. The car was shit. You knew it was shit. And it wasn't going to get there anyway. All I'm saying is we have a very long time in the car if you go to do the silent treatment thing for 11 when, hours. When I bought the car, very, very boring I for told everybody. you that I bought the car to get the wheels and you sold my car and my freaking wheels. I kept wheels. the wheels. You kept the wheels? Yeah. Did you actually keep the wheels? Of course I did. That was part of the... Dude, I wouldn't did sell you the actually... wheels. Of course I kept the wheels. That's You awesome. love the wheels. So we still have the wheels? Of course we still have the wheels. They're on the car, but they're coming back to Sydney. I sold it without the wheels. It was BYO wheels. Oh, that's fine then. That's fine. No, awesome. The truth is, the little purple Nugget Daihatsu caught my eye because of the wheels. And in these crazy times, they're actually worth more than the rest of the car. So now we're together in the Euro Nugget, I guess I can take charge of navigating. Now we're a couple of days into this trip and we still haven't even tested the performance of this little Volkswagen up. So it's time to do a zero to 100 test. 
It doesn't love the launch, does it? It's 50 k's an hour. You just got to wind it, wind it, wind it. Are you flat? I'm flat. What's the hard rev limit, I wonder? That's 100 now. Oh. 16.65 seconds. Oh. It's not great. It feels more exciting than that, doesn't it? It's definitely not more exciting than that. Okay. What the up lacks in performance, it makes up for in comfort, style and potential. We burn through the kilometres with barely another car in sight, making our way towards Tottenham, which is one of the towns that claim to be the centre of New South Wales. So for now, we just sit back and enjoy the countryside in Euro comfort. Everybody, we've made it. We're here. We have made our way to Tottenham. It's a long way. Which is allegedly the centre of New South Wales. But is it? That's what we're here but to find out, Because Martin. there is controversy. There is conjecture. There's conjecture and controversy that potentially this is not the centre of New South Wales. There's other towns that are vying for that title. In fact, they've been arguing over it for about a hundred years years. The whole purpose of our journey was to come out here and find the true centre of New South Wales. We're using a metric that has not been done yet. They've used four or five different methods, they including um, polymetric... Po Polygon-based metric algorithms. Uh, and they've also done where they've like somebody's actually cut out a map of New South Wales, balanced it on a pen, looked at the dot, cross-referenced that, there's conjecture, people. Apparently it's a hard thing to work out because if a river slightly bends in one part of the uh, state, then that can change where the center is somehow. Yes. Anyway, we're going to work it out. We're going to solve it. We've got a method. We've come up with our own algorithmic method, and that's what we're going to use to calculate it and settle it. Let's head into town, Martin, and let's just get this sorted out once and for all. All right, into Tottenham town center. We need to find the center of the center, allegedly. Allegedly, Martin. Now Tottenham's a small town, a couple of hundred people. It's got a police station and a couple of shops and a school and a bowling green. We've completed the first part of our mission, which is making it all the way to Tottenham in a city car. Now all we have to do is go and buy a meat pie. Hey mate, how you going? Thanks, buddy. Could I get two meat pies, please? Have some sauce, tomato oh, sauce. tomato sauce. Two tomato sauces, thank you. Absolutely. Uh, keep them warm in our little thing here. Thank you, mate. Perfect. Thank you very much. Unreal, mate. Have a great day. Thank you See very you much. Guys. See you, mate. You. This here, the, what does this say down here? It says the deputy mayor had an erection in... No, it says oh. it was erected in... Oh, sorry. No, it, it was, a, sorry, it was erected in November 2012. And this is Lachlan Shire Council. Now, they are in dispute with the Bogan Shire Council, who are each claiming to be the centre. So, Mun, why don't you tell the people how we're going to solve this once and for all? Even They have been arguing for 100 years. OK, they've been arguing about this for a long the time. The answer is in this the case. The answer is within this case. Half the answer is within this case. And if you haven't already figured it out, we're going to sample meat pies from those two locations and decide the winner based on the quality of the meat pies offered in those towns. It's the fairest way it's to do it. It's the fairest way. It's very Australian. We're eating a meat pie from Lachlanshire. We're eating a meat pie from Boganshire. We will tell you which is the best experience, yep. therefore who, crowning... Exactly. Who will take ownership of the centre of New South Wales? That's right. It's very it, it has work. massive implications, Mark, because we're talking tourist dollars. Absolutely. Y you and I, it's a lot of responsibility to do a good job. Huge. Huge. We carefully secure our pie warmer into the Euro Nugget and then catch some locals on the side of the road for their opinion on this centre of New South Wales controversy. So, but Boganshire reckon that they are the centre? No. no. Okay. Yeah, graphical centre is right there. It's just out there. 20 which 20. is part of which shire? Lachlanshire. Which is this shire? Yeah. So Tottenham's the real centre? Yeah. Yes. So they're full of shit? Yeah. Yes. 
Tottenham is part of the Lachlan Shire, which claims to be the centre of New South Wales. But Ningen is part of the Bogan Shire, and they too claim to be the centre of New South Wales. So it's time to drive out and find out for ourselves. We've got our pies, Martin. That's half of the journey done. Are they getting hot? They are getting hot. Yeah. Or staying hot, They're I should staying say. hot, importantly. They won't really cook in there, but they'll stay nice and warm. And um, the road is looking a bit, a bit more rural again, isn't it? It sure is, mate. It's looking a little bit rough. And a um, few more um, potholes. A bit of uh, flooding out here, so road condition's not great. If All I, I can say, if you were in a mirror with no springs, it would have been nasty. If a road train comes the other way, and for those playing at home, a road train is a truck. As well, long as it's fine. Yeah, so the, the, the answer is in the name. But uh, it's massive and they don't stop or go easily and there's birds everywhere. Um, so yeah, it's, this is a bit like a single lane road. We're a bit more rural now than we've been the rest of the time. We're going to the centre can of New South Wales. So the centre can is a pile of stones that's taken from a mine? It's, yeah, it's quarried out of a copper mine and they put it in a big, um, a big pile and they're like, this is it, even and though it's still controversial. We're going there so that we can get a feel of the true center. We're gonna see if we can attune ourselves to the resonation of the center. Absolutely. So that when we go to Bogan, up to Ningen, we are fully informed before we do our pie test. Yeah, we'll get a vibe from the, the center can about what's actually happening and that will help us decide. Onwards, 30 k's to go. This is an example of what you do on a, um, like a single lane country road. You just pull off to the side, which doesn't matter so much when you're in a Land Cruiser or a massive ute but it's not as great in a Volkswagen up, so we've got to slow right down and just go onto the dirt on the side of the road. All right, onto the dirt we go. We haven't had that much dirt yet, have we? No. Any little patches. Oh. <laughs> you're, gonna, you're about to have a brown Volkswagen up, by the way. It's all right. All jokes aside, can you imagine if you were in your car right now, what that would be? Are you, are you, do you keep saying that to make yourself feel better? Yes, yes, that's exactly why I'm doing it. You sold my Dohatsu out from under me. And I'm trying to make you feel better about it and myself feel better. I don't, I don't feel better time. about it. No, I'm enjoying spending time with you in this vehicle. Like, this is a good vehicle, yeah. But, but I I had my own vehicle that I could drive. Had. That's true. The road that passes by the centre can closes in heavy rain, which has been occurring in the days leading up to our trip. It happened to be mostly dry when we arrived, but there were still warnings, and I thought it best to play it safe and check any water crossings for depth. Because we are the greatest four drive channel on the internet and in the entire world, um, it is important to make sure that you get an accurate depth um, using a stick to make sure it's not too, oh shit, oh shit. <laughs> what a dickhead. Oh God, oh God. What a fucking dickhead. What the f**k's wrong with you, bro? After successfully navigating the water crossing, we've got a few more muddy roads before we make it to the centre of New South Wales. All right, we are approaching the centre can of New South Wales. I think I can see it up ahead. The road has got bad. Yeah, it's, I mean, it's just progressively getting worse and worse and worse. Foggy because it's been raining and because the dirt road just turns to mud. And I don't think that this is like a particularly like well visited tourist oh. attraction oh. and as such dude we're here is that's that it? it that's it the emoji all we're right here. well done mate there it is man fantastic okay we drove to a thing <laughs> we made it well everybody we have made it to the geographical center of new south wales the beautiful state in which we live the best state in australia this is the center can and here it probably says as such, but some absolute f***ing trough lolly has uh, taken the sign and also decided to graffiti on it, which is, I don't even know why anyone would do that. Anyway, that's It's erected the point. from slag, which is like leftover mining refuse, mm -hmm. uh, taken from the Mount Royal Copper Mine and the Bogan River Copper Mine. The discovery of the former led to the birth of what is the present town of Tottenham, which is where we just bought our pies. But that is not stopping Ningen in the Bogan Shire still claiming that they are the true center. That's absolutely correct. So this is a bit off the beaten track, actually. Um, it's dirt roads today, they're mud roads, and when it's actually raining, they're closed. You can't even come here. So we managed to fluke it and get here, which is awesome. But right now, we are gonna continue on, get our other meat pie, and then do the final judging. The final scientific test. As a tourist destination, 
Um, yeah. I mean, th there's no ice cream shop. You can have a picnic. There's no... Um, I went to views. the centre of New South Wales and all I got was a picture of slag on this t-shirt. Yeah. No toilet. I mean, there's toilet kind of... Everywhere. Everywhere. The centre can might not be your typical club med mad resort holiday, but the journey to it really does show the beautiful parts of the state that we call home. We've proved that this area is accessible with just about any car, because if an up can do it, so can anything else. Except for maybe a stupidly lowered Daihatsu charade. We are on the road to Ningen. We're off the dirt again and back on blacktop. And this Volkswagen up is excellent. I'm standing by it. This car is the best vehicle made in the last 10 years. Our pie is being kept warm. It is working perfectly off 12 volts. Plug in the front here. We're traveling, we're in comfort. We've got air con. Those dirt roads would have absolutely destroyed my Daihatsu, which while would have been funny to watch, would have sucked for me and my spine. So I'm actually quite comfortable at the moment in this Volkswagen up, which is, it's a really good car. It is a really, it's good, really car. good And you know what? It's used, it's doing something like five liters per hundred or less. Martin, we are 17 minutes out of Ningen in the Bogan Shire. We're gonna find a bakery, we're gonna get some pies, then we're gonna sit by the Bogan River and crown the true center of New South Wales. This is it, mate. We've made it. You know you're back in civilization when you see power lines. We are entering Ningen in the Bogan Shire. Now we gotta sniff ourselves out of bakery, Martin, and put this to rest. We'll find one. So this town is a bit bigger than where we were earlier today. Uh, it's still not a huge place. It's just that little bit bigger. Communication towers, silos, power lines, more like hobby farm looking things with horses in them. Bins. There. Bins. There's bins, like you can actually put your garbage out. And cars, because otherwise everything you see out on a dirt road is usually a ute. But around here there's like normal passenger normal cars. cars. Here we go, Martin. Welcome Here it is. Ningen. Welcome to Ningen. The rail station and a shearing <laughs> shearing shed museum. <laughs> a rail museum and a shearing museum. Count me in. Ningen has a population nearly 10 times that of Tottenham, so this really is a David versus Goliath battle. The name is an Aboriginal word that means a long pond of water. The population boomed when the railway was completed 140 years ago, meaning farmers could get their produce to market. We found a shop selling pies, and with them safely stowed in our car oven, we can finally set out to put this to rest once and for all. Martin, we have arrived in Ningen at the Big Bogan. It's time to put this to rest once and for all. What have we got here, Martin? So there's a sculpture of a fella who's, who's got an earring, a goatee, a Southern Cross tattoo, He's caught a fish, he's got stubbies on, he's got flip-flops. He's got a goatee. There's a spider it's on a his spider. leg. spider, he's got, yeah. He's got a singlet. I mean, it does say Australia, doesn't it? And he's, he's got his esky there. It does. I Oof. think we should start on the Tottenham pie. Okay. And see if the Bogan one can match it. Yeah. Let's put the Bogan ones in there. Tottenham pie. Oh, they're hot. Oh, yes. Really hot. It's worked perfectly, dude. All right. Do you know the secret when sourcing your pie? Source the top source and let your front. lips push it down. Source the front and only source up to 50% of the pie so that as you eat it, the sauce dribbles down like that, see? Yep. All right, the Tottenham pie. Cheers. Cheers, Martin, good job. Good flavor. Quite a doughy base. A doughy base. Um. I wouldn't call it crispy, but it's also been in our warmer thing. No, mm. oh, that's not bad. No, the flavour of the meat's pretty good. The flavour's good. Yeah. Doughy base. Mm. All right. Mm. Not a bad pie. That's not bad. Now, the bogan pie. This is it, Martin. We've driven uh, all of this way for this bite. This moment. Cheers, Martin. All right, cheers. Oh. Oh. Here we go. I'm scared. 
the side of the You say it, then I'll say it. The bug and pie is better. No. No, you're wrong. Do you know why you're wrong? The, the bug and pie is Do better. Do you know why you're wrong? No. That's just your opinion, if I'm wrong. Well, it can't be better. So you are wrong. It can't be better than the other pie. What? It's the same pie. It's the same pie. What? It's from the same place. You can tell. Because it's got the same markings in it. What Look. do you mean? See the holes? See the shape? This one's an hour older, granted, but it is from the same... You know how I know? The Tottenham pie is made in Dubbo. They don't make their own pies. No one in this town makes their own pies. They all come from the same pie manufacturer, 150 kilometres that way. Welcome to modern Australia, everybody, where the pies are the same, we still have to choose. But you just chopped our whole video. I didn't chop our whole video. I'm just speaking truth, man. I'm spitting truth. I know, but which pie do you think tastes better? Oh, the bogan one, for sure. I reckon that pile of stones outside of Tottenham, I reckon, is the centre of New South Wales. Okay. And we went there. I reckon this town is going, you know what would be great? Some tourists. Do you know how I know that? Because they've built a big bogan here. Mm. So... Do the locals love it? I reckon a lot of locals probably don't like being in a place that is being promoted as a bogan place. Yeah. And I think part of that mentality of getting people here is also what has brought them to the conclusion of going, let's claim we're the centre of New South Wales. I think it's a reach for the tourist dollar. Yep. And I'm going with Tottenham as the true centre. Really? Without any scientific evidence, without any... It's my opinion only. I have really? no data. I'm going with Tottenham. Are what you are you really? doing, Martin? You're going with Bogan, aren't you? I'm going with Bogan. Really? All right, what have you, what have you got? We'll let the people decide. Bogan's closer, isn't it? Well, by time it is, but that's the thing. I'm going with Tottenham too, man. Right, that's the answer. there it is. Go visit Tottenham. Go get a pie. It was probably made in the same town up there. Yeah. It doesn't matter. It's not as good as a pie that someone's going to make themselves, but guess what? You can't get that there. And Probably after... because a bakery that does set up there cannot afford to keep making pies because not enough people come and buy them. After you've finished visiting Tottenham, spend some of your money in as many of the little places there as you can. Then come to Bogan this and is, do it all this again. This is technically Ningen. Go to Ningen, support the locals, be a legend. That's it. Go and see some of Australia if you already live here. And if you don't live here and you're allowed to come here, come here and come and see some of Australia. Yeah. It's awesome. There it is. What a beautiful day. All right. Thoroughly Thanks, everybody. My pies. Thank you, Big you know, Bogan. Clean it up and keep Thank it Thank you beautiful. very much. So what did we learn from this journey? Well, get in your car, take a road trip, and support your local business. Just don't take a lowered Daihatsu.